Hello, I'm Tom, and thank you for purchasing one of our MP600 centrifugal oil cleaners from Isle of Wight Group. Today I'll take you through a step-by-step -step guide to the cleaning and servicing procedure. The first thing to remember when working with high-pressure oil separators is that you must isolate the oil pressure. So this means using an isolation valve if you have one, or turn off the engine or equipment. I'd also recommend using some gloves, obviously just to protect your hands. The first step is by removing the band clamp. We just turn this in an anti-clockwise fashion and when it starts to become loose, we can then remove the T-bolt from its housing and locate the band clamp either on your flange or move it away. The next thing to do is to remove the cover assembly. We turn this in a clockwise direction because we have a left hand thread on the product. We spin until we can hear a slight clonking noise and then we can lift off the cover assembly. We're now left with the body housing assembly, the bowl assembly and the cover assembly which we've just removed. So now we need to remove the bowl assembly off the housing. The best thing to do is just lift slightly just to make sure any remaining oil drains out of the bowl assembly before then lifting the complete bowl assembly off the spindle and into a dirty area ready for cleaning. One other thing to be aware of is just to check the o-ring on the body housing assembly just to make sure there's no cracks or it's not brittle otherwise you can leave it. We're now going to start the bowl disassembly and for this we'll need some tools. So we'll need a mallet, we'll need a hook spanner, we'll need some wrenches, a 3mm alum key and then we'll need some sort of wooden or nylon tool so that we can remove the sludge from inside the separator. Okay, to disassemble the bowl assembly we should lie it down horizontal, we should take our wrenches Again, we have a left-hand thread on the bowl assembly, so we put the wrenches on and turn in a clockwise direction and loosen the cover nut until you can now use your hand to remove the cover nut. There's also a washer under here that you should keep. Lie the bowl assembly down and then we will need the mallet. Hold your hand on the top of the bar wall and we use the mallet to try and remove the distributor plate. Okay, we can now stand the unit back up and remove the bar wall and the top turbine. Being careful because you have lots of sludge and oil inside. We can then remove the top turbine and we have it in three different sections. Okay, now we've got the distributor plate with the bowl discs and bearing tube open. We now don't need to actually clean the bowl discs. They're designed so that all the sludge doesn't stick onto them. But one thing we should do is just check the O-ring at the top, make sure there's no damage, make sure it's not brittle, otherwise it will need to be replaced. If the sludge for any reason goes into the bowl discs, then you may need to remove them. The way to do this is just to slide them off the top. You can then clean and wash, and you can use a Biogen Active product, making sure that we don't use anything abrasive which can damage the smooth nature of the bowl discs. You can then replace. So now we need to disassemble the top turbine. We need a three mil Allen key, just to undo these eight screws. Okay, now we've removed the eight bolts. We can then remove the plate where we have the top turbine. We then need to remove the mesh supports, take the mesh out of the unit, and this can be disposed of. 
We must also remove the O-ring from the top turbine, ready for cleaning. Okay, now we need to start the cleaning. Just wipe around the base of the distributor. Any bits of sludge that have collected, please use a wooden tool or a nylon tool so we don't damage the aluminium. And we can remove the deposited sludge from around the distributor plate. A little wipe. And we're nearly there. A little bit of spray if you need. We're using a, a lubricant there, but be aware that whatever you use to clean will obviously potentially end up in your oil system. At this point, we should also just check that there's an, there's an O-ring inside the groove here. Again, check that it's in good condition. And if there's any problems, then we need to replace. Okay, and now to the main part of the sludge. Inside the bowl wall we have the sludge cake which is collected and behind that a paper insert or a paper liner which is used to bring out all the contamination together. What we need to do is use your again your non-metallic device, get behind the paper insert, paper liner and push all the way down the wall of the bowl. Turn it around and do the same on the other side. The paper liner should now just come away from the bowl wall. If you need, just slide the tool around the edge of the bowl. You can then use your hands If it's sticking a little bit, use your tool again, just to pry it away from the bottom. And once loose, we can then either slide the sludge out the top or remove the bowl in its entirety, leaving the sludge cake. We now have a clean bowl wall. A good idea here is to actually put some lubricant on your cloth. The cloth should be clean to avoid any particles going into your oil system to try and get the bowl wall as clean as possible. You can continue to clean both sections of the distributor plate and the bowl wall until it's nice and shiny and even wash it. When you've removed the top turbine it's a very good idea just to check the top nozzles that there's nothing blocking the top nozzles and if you have um, compressed air available the best thing to do is to just give a, a blast on each of the four nozzles to make sure they're clear, clear like so. In the event that you actually need to remove the bowl discs remember that it's not a normal cleaning operation but if sludge goes into the the bowl discs themselves or there's some damage you may need to remove the discs in which case start by removing the o-ring at the top of the bearing tube being careful not to damage it on the thread you can then slide the bowl discs up the grooves and off the top of the bearing tube We have a locking nut here, we can then use our hook spanner just to undo in a clockwise direction the locking nut. Okay, and then we can lift off the bearing tube as well. So once the locking nut's removed, we can then remove the impeller. Now there may be some sludge, which means um, you'll need to use maybe a tool just to lift the impeller, especially if there's sludge inside, but then you can lift and remove the impeller off the bearing tube and the distributor plate and it's all disassembled. First thing to do is to reassemble the top turbine. Replace the 
mesh support, the inner mesh support first, then the outer mesh support, and then we put a new mesh inside. The meshes come as part of the minor cleaning kit and can be replaced. We then replace the turbine plate, lining up the holes. We can then start to use our three mil Allen key to tighten slightly. Before we fully tighten, however, it's a good idea to replace the O-ring if you've taken it out. Please use a little bit of grease or cleaned oil or some sort of lubricant to make the process a little bit easier. You can always use the back of the Allen key just to ensure the O-ring is fully down and then you can continue to screw in the eight screws holding down the top turbine. And we now have the top turbine assembled. We now move on to the bearing tube and the distributor plate. Again, when we replace the O-ring, use silicon grease or something similar. If we've removed the distributed impeller from the distributor plate, now is the time to replace. You need to make sure that the notch on the impeller locates into the groove at the base so it sits flush. You can then use the locking nut. Again, remembering this is a left-hand thread, we can tighten and use the hook spanner. We can now replace the bowl discs if we take a few at a time. The grooves on the bowl discs can be slotted down the grooves of the bearing tube. All the bowl discs are now in place. The next step is to put the bearing tube o-ring on the top. Just grease again. Be careful that we don't damage the o-ring. We can use the hook spanner to get underneath if it helps into the groove and just smooth around. One very important thing to check at this point is that the top of the discs are actually level with the step in the bearing tube. So if you can't see a gap as in, as in this situation, then it's absolutely fine. But if there's a gap between the top of the discs and the step, then you'll need to add additional discs to the top. The next step is to replace the cleaned bowl wall. We put over and secure. We then need to replace with a clean paper insert. Again, this is just to make the cleaning easier next time you come to it. And then we replace the top turbine. And push down. Nicely secure. The final stage is to replace the washer and the top cover nut. Again, turning anti-clockwise to tighten. We need to tighten up to ensure there's no leakages. So we take the spanners, make sure it's nice and tight. The top of the cover nut should be level with the bare the top of the bearing tube assembly. And that completes the bowl reassembly. Once we have our clean bowl assembly, we're now at the final assembly stage. We take the bowl assembly and carefully replace onto the spindle.
give it a little spin to make sure it's rotating freely and then we can replace the cover assembly. Be gentle and just feel the top of the spindle and then we tighten anti-clockwise, keep turning until you hit the stop and the final part is to replace the band clamp. And that's the MP600 cleaned and serviced. Well that's it, thanks for watching, I hope it's been useful. If you have any further questions or queries, you can refer to our installation and servicing manual, or don't hesitate to contact us here at IW Group.